Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's a, a great pleasure for me to be here to share my experience on uh, uh, the use of cardiac CT in the emergency department. We have uh, four topics to cover in this presentation, starting with the uh, clinical setting of acute chest pain patients and no initial EKG and cardiac biomarkers changes, passing for the tribe or rule out for the non-diagnostic EKG and equivocal cardiac biomarkers and finishing with the occult coronary lesion. So at the end, we we'll spend some slides about uh, what type of scanner we need at this aim. So the first topic is probably the most important and uh, the most uh, better investigated. The setting of patient with uh, low to intermediate pretest likelihood of coronary artery disease, acute chest pain admitted in the emergency department, and no initial EKG and cardiac biomarkers changes. Uh, this application of cardiac CT was con already considered appropriate in 2008 from the uh, European Society of Cardiology. And the last American clinical recommendation on cardiac CT considered as appropriate with a score of seven out of nine, this type of indication. This is probably the uh, first important multicenter trial, American studies published in uh, Jack in 2009 about the uh, role of CT for the early triage of patients with acute chest pain. 370 patients with chest pain and a normal initial uh, troponin and non-ischemic EKG, EKG. So in these patients, the sensitivity and negative predictive value of cardiac CT for the diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome was 100%. So no acute coronary syndrome were uh, diagnosed among patients with normal arteries at CT. Uh, uh, moreover, CT uh, showed uh, improved discrimination uh, power in comparison with TIMI score. Importantly, the two-year follow-up study of Romicat-1, published in JAK, uh, Imaging 2011, showed that uh, uh, in patients with uh, normal uh, coronaries, uh, sorry, with uh, normal coronaries, the blue line at CT, no event were recorded at two-year follow-up and also low, very lower rate, of, uh, lower rate of event in patients with less than 50% stenosis. The CTSTAT trial is another important trial published in JAK in 2011. 750 patients with a randomization one-to-one -one in CTA uh, branch and the standard of care group that include, again, a serial uh, cardiac enzyme and uh, EKG. Uh, similar uh, inclusion and ex exclusion criteria. The results are very interesting because uh, in the CTA group, the authors found a 54% uh, of a reduction of the time to diagnosis from 6 to uh, 2.9 hour and a 40% reduction of the uh, global uh, ED cost without uh, differences in terms of MACE at one month follow-up. Romica 2 trial, published in New England Journal of Medicine, probably the most important study in this field. 1,000 patients with a randomization one-to-one -one in CTA and the standard of care group. You can note that in a CTA group, the uh, length of the hospital stay was reduced from 26 to just uh, nine hours. The time to diagnosis from 19 to 10 hours and uh, probably most important, uh, the direct discharge directly from the emergency department passed from 12 to 47 percent without differences in terms of maze at uh, one month follow-up. This graphic shows the uh, uh, terrific uh, uh, increase of the direct discharge from the emergency department in the first 10 hours of uh, stay in comparison with standard uh, evaluation. This is another important trial, uh, again published in New England Journal of Medicine 2012, the Hakrim PI, another uh, American study, with a very similar study design apart from the randomization ratio 2 in CT to 1 in the standard of care group. The results are exactly uh, um, the same of the uh, Romica 2 with uh, uh, increase in the direct discharge from the emergency department and the shorter length of stay. You can see here that also in this trial, at the one month follow-up, no differences in terms of maces were observed between CT and traditional care group. Uh, this is a very interesting paper published this year in uh, Jack, the uh, Beacon trial uh, coordinated by Kuhn Neiman. 
in uh, uh, Erasmus Medical Center. Uh, this is the first trial that combine uh, cardiac CT and the new era of uh, uh, troponin, so uh, the high sensitivity troponin. The results uh, are different in comparison with the previous trial, probably due to the properties of the new troponin uh, that uh, uh, allows to the referring physician to discharge the patients uh, after just six and not 12 hours as previously uh, suggested, and has more sensitivity for the diagnosis of ACS, probably leading uh, the referring physician more confident to discharge the patients. Uh, accordingly, you can see that the discharge from the emergency department was not more frequent after CTA, and the length of stay was similar. However, uh, ad, um, the advantages of, for CT group are still present because uh, in CTA group, uh, patients have lower direct medical cost and less outpatient testing after the uh, index uh, uh, emergency department visit. I think that the one topic, uh, so, sorry, this is the comparison between uh, Acrim PI and Romicat and Beacon in terms of length of stay without no differences here, and uh, uh, the same uh, for the diver discharge from the AD, similar in Beacon and very different in the previous two trials. However, I think that uh, uh, one topic uh, needs to be underlined because this is a study design of the trial. You can note that in this trial, in comparison with the previous one, uh, CT was considered as positive also in the presence of less than 50% stenosis, not only in the presence of more than 50%. Uh, with the need of repeated cardiac enzyme, then with the need to stay again after cardiac CT in the emergency department. I think in 2016 we did to uh, consider uh, in these patients the role of the new tool for the evaluation of the functional relevance of stenosis by CT, uh, FFRCT and CT perfusion, in order to obtain uh, a possibility to have uh, a safe discharge also of the patients with non-obstructive disease at CT. Just a clinical example from our emergency department, patient, hypertensive patients with previous detection of 40% stenosis in uh, LAD, symptomatic for a typical chest pain with negative high sensitivity troponin. The referring physicians ask a cardiac CT because he's not uh, convinced by the clinical, uh, from the clinical part, CTA confirm a 50% stenosis in the proximal LAD that you can see here. Uh, we sent the images to have the FFRCT that was absolutely negative, 0.87. So no further evaluation was performed, uh, just the medical therapy was implemented due to the non obstructive lesion, and no MACE was observed at three months follow-up. Another clinical setting in which, in my opinion, cardiac CT should be very interesting, also in the era of uh, 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 high sensitivity troponin, is the patient with uh, persistent chest pain, with multiple short, fast episodes of chest pain, despite serial EKG and uh, biomarkers uh, uh, negative for acute ischemia. Here another example from my uh, emergency department, a male, 56 years old, with a risk factor, uh, he had uh, multiple fast episodes of chest pain during the 12-hour observation stay in our emergency department without sign of ischemia at, at serial EKG and negative serial high sensitivity troponin. Despite this uh, negative EKG and the biomarker, the referring physician before to discharge a patient has a cardiac CT because the new onset of symptoms. And as you can see clearly, we, you, we found this 90% stenosis in the proximal portion of LAD, and a part of 90% stenosis, this lesion has all features that configure the high risk plaque, the low attenuation value, and positive remodeling. The very fast new version of FFRCT lead to a 0.6 result, so very uh, important flow limitation and then CAT that was performed confirmed the lung lesion that uh, uh, become very severe in the proximal to mid portion of LAD. So the ESC guideline uh, nowadays still consider in a class 2A level of evidence A, the cardiac CT at this aim. So the second topic is the triple rule out. Triple rule out is the possibility with uh, one uh, scan, with one exam, to rule out the presence of uh, the uh, three causes of uh, um, chest pain that can lead to the cardiac death of the patient, so acute coronary and aortic syndrome and pulmonary embolism. 
Here from the literature, a young woman with chest pain and shortness of breath, no uh, coronary artery disease, but uh, um, pulmonary embolism. So uh, the uh, clinical recommendation from the American College consider this indication at the upper level of the uncertain category with a score six, six out of nine, uh, particularly due to the lack of large multicenter uh, studies documenting the usefulness of this, uh, uh, of this approach. This is a recently uh, published in Jack Imaging uh, study from uh, an uh, American registry that evaluated more than uh, 10,000 patients uh, for chest pain, 11,000 uh, performing uh, CTA alone, and 1,500 performing a triple rule out. Here are the differences. You can see a significant, mild but significant differences in the diagnosis of aortic dissection and pulmonary embolism with triple rule out. Similar diagnosis of uh, uh, coronary artery disease and similar diagnostic heal with any of the three above included. However, importantly, we have to note that the rate of uninterpretable CT scan was higher significantly in the triple rule out group. Moreover, the amount of the contrast is significantly higher and the radiation is uh, uh, again uh, increased. So the uh, clinical suggestion of the authors are to uh, limit, to expand the protocol from CTA to triple rule out just in the presence of clinical or other features that configure an high risk of uh, pulmonary embolism and uh, aortic dissection. Another recent uh, study, 1,000 patients published in JCCT, Clinical endpoint, uh, MACE uh, at one month follow-up uh, as a composite of uh, death, myocardial infarction, revascularization, measure cardiovascular surgery, and thrombolytic therapy. The results are very interesting because in 23% of patients, CT was positive for in a triple rule-out uh, protocol, and MACE occurring in 50% of patients with triple rule-out positive and only seven, less than 1% with triple rule-out negative. Then, the negative predictive value of triple rule out was 99%. And you can see that the discrimination power uh, for uh, all maze, uh, death, and myocardial infarction, and, and the minor, um, minor um, outcome was significantly improved for triple rule out versus all clinical score, Grace, Hart, Timmy, and Diamond the Forester. Just a, a case from uh, my institute 84 years old patient with history of cabbage and mitral valve replacement. Recent assessed to another emergency department for chest pain, quickly discharged because negative troponin without other uh, examination. Six days later, patient referred to our emergency department for chest pain and dyspnea. He underwent uh, cardiovascular CT for also an elevated dimer. And you can see that the uh, pulmonary arterial phase uh, rule out the presence of uh, uh, pulmonary embolism, but show a significant extrinsical compression due to this uh, very huge mediastinal hematoma that is related to this uh, type A OT dissection. So the third topic is that of uh, EKG uh, non-diagnostic, so not uh, very easy to interpret it due to the pacemaker or to the rapid atrial fibrillation and uh, in association equivocal cardiac biomarkers. Here another example from my emergency department, patient with rapid atrial fibrillation at the admission, prolonged atypical chest pain and mild and atypical in terms of behavior increase of high sensitivity troponin. After cardioversion, still no clear sign of uh, ischemia, but the referring physician asked a cardiac CT for the uh, mild increase of high sensitivity troponin. We found uh, this uh, uh, severe lesion in the apical portion of LED, severe stenosis in first diagonal branch, in uh, proximal and distal circ without significant disease in right coronary artery. FFRCT was positive and uh, CAT confirmed all lesion, distal LID, proximal diagonal branch, uh, and uh, proximal and distal circ. So last but not least, the acute coronary lesion. This is the clinical scenario of patients with acute myocardial infarction but no obstructive, more than 50% stenosis at the invasive coronary angiography. Uh, this uh, uh, grid paper, published in uh, circulation some years ago, evaluated 50 patients with these features, so acute myocardial infarction at EKG, and for clinical point of view, 
no obstructive disease at CAT, and the CMR documenting an ischemic lesion in terms of edema and late enhancement. In this patient, CTA identified 101 plaque against with uh, 41 alone, identified by CAT, 61 in uh, the infarct-related arteries. The differences between the infarct and non-infarct related are uh, more mixed plaque, more plaque area, and more positive remodeling in uh, the uh, lesion in the infarct related area. So CTA detects coronary plaque in non-stenotic coronary arteries that are underestimated by CAT and identify different distribution of plaque type in infarcted versus non-infarcted region. You have an example of uh, a normal arteries at CAT with a documentation at CMR of uh, uh, ischemic uh, scar in the lateral wall with CERC at CT that, was, uh, that has a lot of disease with particularly this uh, moderate but uh, ulcerative lesion in that portion. And a similar example, normal arteries at CAT, apical uh, infarction at CMR, and again, the proximal LAD, this very mild in terms of percentage of stenosis, but with uh, this uh, ulcerative lesion uh, in the proximal LAD. So uh, as last, uh, uh, which type of scanner we need to have at this aim in the emergency department? So the current issue are for coronary CT angiography, particularly the higher rate that usually characterize these patients, this type of patients admitted in the emergency department with chest pain. The problem are low image quality and diagnostic accuracy and very high radiation. For tribal rule out, uh, you saw previously image quality and particularly contrast and radiation. And for the possibility to perform a CT perfusion, again, radiation and image quality. Uh, uh, regarding the first topic, the heart rate, it's possible with the latest generation scanner to uh, scan a patient at very high heart rate, but with the important drawback of impressive radiation exposure. What we can do with the scanner that we installed one year ago in Monzino that combine a fast gain rotation time, the intracycle motion correction algorithm to reduce the coronary motion blurring, and the whole heart coverage due to the 16 centimeter ZX coverage. You're an, an abstract that we presented at the last uh, Congress of European Society of Radiology, comparing patients with uh, low and stable heart rate during the scan, less than 55, mean rate 58, and patients with more than 80, with a mean rate of 91. So despite this very impressive difference in terms of heart rate, we have the same coronary interpretability by 7, 97%, and same image quality score that range in both groups between good to excellent image quality. Just a clinical case, 125 BPM before the scan that we was able to reduce to 100 with the uh, administration of uh, metoprolol. This is the EKG during the scan, 102. So despite this heart rate, we was able to identify the severe lesion at the proximal region, the proximal portion of LAD that was confirmed by CAT and then treated by PCI. For tribal rule out, we have an example of uh, a complete detection of the entire coronary tree, LED, circ, and right coronary artery without motion with good contrast to noise ratio, and of uh, the entire uh, pulmonary artery tree. You can see here that the amount of contrast is 40 ml, and the dose is less than one millisievert. And finally, for the CTP capability, an example, a female, 40 two years old, admitted to a big hospital in the downtown of Milan for suspicion of acute coronary syndrome with uh, uh, anterior leads, with the apical leads, with sign of ischemia. At CAT, uh, just a myocardial bridging and, at the emergent CAT in the LAD, and then suspected was negative for ischemia. So they underwent, they referred the patients to uh, CMR to rule out the presence of myocarditis, but myocarditis surprisingly confirmed the diagnosis of ischemia in terms of edema, transmural, and transmural late enhancement. So the referring physicians uh, sent the patient to us to evaluate with a combination of CTA and CTP the anatomy of bridging and to try to detect the ischemia. Here the anatomy, myocardial bridging in the middle to uh, distal portion of LED, very usual findings, but with surprise, no ischemia at rest, and uh, important ischemia in the apical region consistent with the AKG, the total dose was 2.2 millisievert. 
So in conclusion, as reported by Kun Niemann in this very interesting review published the last year in European Art, Cardiac CT has established by several multicenter trials as a viable, safe, and potentially more efficient than functional testing in the evaluation of acute chest pain patients uh, admitted in the emergency department. However, many other topics are, need to be better investigated. As first, the role of uh, plaque characterization, apart from the stenosis detection and quantification alone, and particularly the role of the additional evaluation by FFRCT or CTP of the functional relevance of stenosis and of the detection of a previous myocardial scar with late enhancement technique that with the recent scanner generation is very easy to detect. You can see here with good agreement with CMR and with very, very low uh, farther radiation exposure. Thank you very much for your kind attention.